This statement, he made my ears dangle with jewelry. This is something that, uh, <clears throat> that we find is natural with women. Uh, even if we find the women uh, pious and righteous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the woman in a fashion and a manner that's unlike men. Even though we're both from the same creature, the same human being, Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, all of us are very uh, aware that women are different from men, or that is the female is different from the male. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, that the male is not like the female. And one of the qualities or characteristics that, that is germane to women is that they like jewelry. This is an indication from the fuqaha of Islam that men are not that creature who pursues grooming himself to the extent that he becomes like a woman. Many of the ulama have written books on ar-rujula, on manliness, on al-muru'a, on the chivalry of men, or manhood. And one of the things that they, they highlight that is usually uh, missed, especially by uh, men in the Western, uh, Western culture, that now, unfortunately, uh, men in the Arab lands and the Asian lands and the African lands, they have adopted this, this uh, what is called metrosexuality. They call it metrosexuality. Metrosexuality is when a man is trying to get in contact or connect with his feminine side. So you'll find men spending a lot of time brushing and combing and oiling their hair, or a lot of time, uh, you know, looking at their fingernails and their toenails, you know, manicuring them, and spending a lot of time looking at their thalbs and making sure that their shirts, you know, nice and pressed and the pen has to be just right in the pocket and the glasses have to match the pen and the socks have to dip. This is for women. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just one example, why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made it forbidden for men to wear gold and silk because the nature of gold and silk as an adornment is only for women. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made it forbidden for the men to shave their beards completely off of their faces. Because the cleaned face, man, is the face that depicts or shows femininity. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa radahu, in the hadith that our Shaykh al-Imam Muhammad ibn Nuh al-Najati, rahimahullahu ta'ala, in his book called Al-Silsilat al-Sahiha, or Al-Silsilat al-Ahadith al-Sahiha, he brings the hadith from Anas, inshallah, where Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Naha Rasulullahi or Naha Nabiullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anat tarajjul illa ghibban. Illa ghibban. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he forbade, forbade specifically for the men, for the rajul, al-rijal, the men, who have rujula, naturally from Allah, manliness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something put inside of us, a rujula, that he forbade the men to brush and comb and oil their hair on their heads, illa ghibban. Just a few days, you know, you let go by. Two days, three days, you don't touch it. But this grooming and carrying the brush and leaving it in your glove compartment and having to comb and oiling it and just looking at you, you know, taking your finger, looking at your eyebrows and going across it in the mirror like this and then going to the left one like this and then going back and looking at your mustache and, you know, pressing down, having a toothbrush for your, for your mustache. This is from vanity. And this is for women. 
So he made my ears dangle with jewelry. It is unbecoming a man, a rajul, to wear a bracelet. Even if he has on there, Bismillah rahman rahim Even if he has on there, you know, Allahu Akbar written on there. It is not the way of a rajul, a man to want to wear a necklace around his neck. This is not from rujula. It's not from manliness. This is for women. The women are the ones who want to wear these things. Ankle bracelets, you know, the rings, the bracelets around their wrists, the necklaces. This is for women. So when we see this narration, this is one of the benefits that we don't see right in our faces, but the ulama, they pull these pearls out, you know, as though they're diving into the ocean and they pull out these pearls and these corals and these gems from these narrations. And this is one of the reasons why the disbelievers have conquered us. And this is one of the reasons why the disbelievers have their foot on our necks and are taking the sanctity from our women and destroying our masajid because not only do we imitate the disbelievers in general, specifically the men of Islam imitate women. And it reminds me of Sheikh Muhammad Jamil Zainu, Habibullah from Syria. He gave a story about 30 years ago, 25 or 30 years ago in one of his books, where he said that a young man and a young lady, they got married in the night where he was going into the room to consummate uh, the marriage with her. And when they got married, when they had the contract, the aqd for the wedding, he had a beard. And so, you know, as the customs of some of the Muslims today, unfortunately, you know, he wants to get sharp. He wants to look good. You know, he wants to look smooth for her. So he shaved off his beard when he walked into the room. It's a true story, of course. The other man is not going to use things that are lies, fake. He walked into the room, no beard, no mustache. She walked out. And the women in the room, the other room, of course, they're going to have the banquet after that. What happened? She says, I made the contract to marry a man, not a woman. I made the contract to marry a man. And then the Sheikh Muhammad J Jamil Zaino, he goes on, he starts talking about the, the nobility of the rooster, how the rooster has this thing on his face. And then he started talking about, you know, the scientifically, even medically, some of the, some of the scientists have proven how the beard protects the man, medically protects him from sunstroke and things like this. And he went on and on and on talking about one of the nobilities of a man is he has a hair on his face. Why does he want to look like a woman? Why? And then some of us, what we do, because we come from Muslim lands, names of Muslim lands we don't need to mention, but some of the lands of the Muslims, if you wear a beard, they'll persecute you. They may stop you in the street, secret police, they may arrest you. They may whip you because they think that you're, you know, part of a terrorist group or they, you're an extremist or something like that. You know, so the brothers will shave their beards because they really love Islam and they love the Sunnah, but they feel forced. But when they come to America and when they come to Canada, where you can wear your beard down to the ground dragging behind you, they still shave their beards. What's the excuse now? What's the excuse now? Where, what's the, are you going to get arrested? So keep the rujula. One of the benefits in this narration is shows the femininity of these women. How they were boasting and bragging. He gave me this. He put this on me and that on me. Look at us. We're imitating women. Wallahi, they are Muslim men now. Wearing earrings. Not one. Two. One on the right ear, one on the left ear. Wallahi al-Azim, brothers, I know a man who graduated from the Islamic University of Medina, a hafiz of Quran. He's been a hafiz for over 20 years, earrings in his ear. Earrings in his ear. 
Where's the rujula? Where's the manliness? Where is it? We've lost it. We have lost it.